guys. Uh, we're, we're five days away. You know, it's one of those things where the week kind of ramps up slowly, ramps up gradually, and then the next thing you know, we're uh, we're at the game, and it's uh, it's time to kick it off and see what's going to happen. Tomorrow, what's the craziest day of the week? I mean, when do you think it really kicks it off here in this room? Like tomorrow, you think we're going to have a day where it goes crazy, or is it Thursday? Wednesday really is when it starts right. to really crank up. But but I when I first started doing this, Friday was the craziest day. But then I think people realized Friday's the craziest day, so they started avoiding Friday, and it made Thursday the craziest day, yeah, if that yeah. makes any sense. But yeah. I think Thursday lately has been the craziest day. The, the, you know, the nuttiness starts when Joe Montana appears on Radio Row. That's when you know that it's officially a Super Bowl. Here's the, here's the true nuttiness. Eight years ago, Indianapolis, height of Tebow mania, at Radio Row, people brushing past Joe Montana to get to Tim Tebow. <laughs> that was the craziest thing I've ever seen. I mean, bumping into Joe Montana, pushing him out of the way to follow the Pied Piper who is Tim Tebow. Oh, my. I don't even know what to say to that. Though Those people are stupid. I don't know what else to say. Sorry. It was a big deal. He was a big deal eight years yep. ago. Joe, Joe Montana was a, a big deal uh, longer Still. ago than that. And uh, Joe Montana. Can you believe that Tim Tebow – Threw a touchdown pass to beat a Dick LeBeau coach defense in overtime. Yeah. In the great Pittsburgh Steelers. Right. Tim Tebow I know. beat the Pittsburgh Steelers yeah. by throwing a pass. Beat the great Dick LeBeau, Troy Palomalu. Right. What in the world is that about? Walk off 80 yard touchdown. <laughs> yeah. Catch and run by Demarius right. Thomas. It was but, a you know, slant route. It was, and, and it was. Uh, <laughs> It's almost like a kid whacking at a pinata when Tim Tebow was throwing the ball. Like every once in a while, he would he would nail the pinata. Yeah, right. Sure. Every once in a while, most of the time he's flailing around all over the place. But every once in a while, can you imagine if Tim Tebow were accurate? Can you imagine oh, well, if he if he'd been accurate? I mean, Tim Tebow would have been. I can't an imagine absolute it. phenom. Yeah, no, you're right. Would you're have right. been a phenom. Yeah, he could have been. He could have been Taysom Hill if he could throw like Taysom yeah. Hill. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, has gotten a lot of criticism. And, Peter, we were talking about this yesterday. He's not criticized for what he's doing. He's criticized for what he's, he's not, not doing. doing. And, and this is such a weird vibe, right? They completely have abandoned the passing game. I think Kyle Shanahan got freaked out by a couple of near misses from Jimmy Garoppolo in the divisional round game against the Vikings. So they decided, screw it, we're just going to run the ball and run the ball until they stop us. And nobody's been able to stop them. Right? The Vikings couldn't stop them. 16 straight runs in the second half of the divisional round game. Eight total passes, 42 total runs in the NFC Championship. And then, so the question becomes, if they have to rely on Jimmy Garoppolo, can he do it, Peter? Look, uh, and I know there was a lot of staunch defense of Jimmy Garoppolo. What do you expect last night at media night? But, look, you have to ask the question. Kyle Shanahan is one of the most brilliant offensive play designers and play callers in the game today. We're in the 100th year of the NFL. And the most bizarre thing I've seen is the San Francisco 49ers getting to the Super Bowl by being a 75% run team. Yeah. How in the world does that happen that you're the 72 Dolphins with Kick and Zonka and Mercury Morris? How in the world does that happen today? And that's why, in my opinion, look, if – your quarterback has thrown 14 passes in six, the last six quarters. It's a concern. It's a concern because if you put the game on his shoulders, which they may well do. Sure. They've put the game on his shoulders several times this year, and it worked out swimmingly. All I'm saying is that can anybody really be positive that if Jimmy Garoppolo throws it 38 times, the 49ers are going to win? No, no, that's that's the you're right. That's the million dollar question. You know, I mean, we've been talking about that all year. Now, I think the the other side of this is okay. Yeah, you know, okay, 14 throws the last six quarters. You're right. It's really odd. I think it's you know the game just played out that way. I don't think Shanahan thought, oh, I'm going to run for 300 yards right. on the Packers and all that too. Uh, to your point, though. I would imagine that Shanahan is very aware of that. And, man, my guy hasn't really gotten a rhythm since week 17 in Seattle in the passing game to where we talked about it a little last hour. I think there'll be probably an effort to get him easy completions through the screen game, play action passes that are quick passes right over the middle, just like a basketball player so he can see the ball, swish through the net a few times and go, okay, I'm back in the flow. But to what you're saying, yeah, I don't know. If he throws it 38 times, I would go, they're not going to win the game. I guess that's what I would basically look at, yeah. right? Like, what's the number – 
of line of demarcation of throws to where you guys would go, oh, that's not good for the 49ers formula. Is it plus 30 throws? Is it plus 25? 25. You think 25. that's about the number, 25? Yeah. And you're starting to go, yeah. oh, they must be playing from behind or they're not, or they or they're not dominating or they in the run, run game, right? You know, you right? T- I, and I like your point, the idea of helping him build some confidence early, yeah. some short passes, control passes, simulated running plays, basically. But if they can't stop the run, I mean, that's the thing. I, I don't think Kyle Shanahan is going to overcomplicate this. No one has been able to stop right. that running game. So they're going to run the ball. And if the Chiefs can't stop it, we will know. The moment Raheem Mostert scored on that third and eight trap play, that the, the NFC Championship game was over. Right. Because it's not like you can adjust in the second half and all of a sudden not get your ass kicked in the running game. Right. If you can't stop them, you can't stop them, and you're not stopping. But you know what? There are other ways to work it. How about the way the Kansas City Chiefs stopped Derrick Henry? I mean, in the last 35 minutes of the game, he only had nine yards or eight yards. And the way that they stopped it is long possessions and basically – making sure that you had some long yardage downs on second and third down. And that is the way I think Kansas City will try to do this. And look, Steve Spagnuolo has a very good big game resume. Yes, he does. Going back to the Giants, really frustrating Tom Brady with a bunch of Kawika Mitchells. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And and when I look at Steve Spagnuolo, I say – He's going to figure out some way. And, and, and can I also say this? I'm not sure it's going to be Raheem Mostert. It might be Tevin Coleman. It could be. Shanahan could be. rides the hot hand. He There's does. No That's exactly what he does. And right. so he, at the start of the Green Bay Packers game, that game I thought was going to be Tevin Coleman. Yeah. And, and it, it became a Mostert game. And now all of a sudden, Mostert, last night at one point, I say, oh my God, Raheem Mostert's got more people around him than Jimmy Garoppolo. Right. It's a, it's amazing right. what 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 one game really what three quarters did for Raheem Mostert. And so to me, I just think this is one of the great things about this Super Bowl. We don't know, and I'm not even sure right now that Kyle Shanahan knows what he's going to do in this well, game. Well, that's the cool thing about this Super Bowl, too. You're right. We don't know. There's really, like, a lot of strength versus strength, weakness versus weakness type yeah. matchups that I think really make it, like, awesome that way. And I think to speak to how awesome this Super Bowl is, all right, we're sitting here on a Wednesday or Tuesday, sorry, at 8 o'clock, and we're breaking down the eighth-rated quarterback in football. I mean, that's where we're looking at it, like the weakness of a team. So that's how strong the team is, really. I think it does give you a little bit of a, like an overlook to go, damn, yeah, there's really not a lot of weaknesses with either one of these teams, especially the 49ers, to just sit here and go, we're talking about a guy who's 27 and 13 as far as touchdowns and interceptions, almost 4,000 yards, you know, quarterback rating only behind Patrick Mahomes at number eight. And I understand the numbers don't say all that, but I just think it is funny. I think we've got a little overboard on the, man, can Jimmy G handle this? I don't know. We saw him go to New Orleans and win a shootout versus Drew Brees. And wasn't him. A, but, it, but it wasn't the Super Bowl. It wasn't no, a single I understand game. that. I get I, that. I, I, mean, I get it. And it get feels it. like a long time ago. Yes, it when does. When you look at the last six quarters and when you accept the reality, and we were there. Yeah. We saw it. We sensed it. Kyle Shannon got freaked out yeah. by the notion that Jimmy G had some, some close calls. He, Eric Kendricks could have three oh, interceptions. Was, definitely. Right? In his hands. So right. let's just run the ball, and we're going to run the ball, and 16 runs later, they can't stop him. So against the Packers, we're just going to run the ball and run the ball, and we're going to get to the Super Bowl. We'll worry about the Super Bowl when the Super Bowl comes. There's got to be guys in that locker room that are thinking, man, if we can't run the ball, can, can Jimmy do this? I, I, how can you not wonder that if you are one of the guys on the team? Isn't it natural? Isn't it natural for – the quarterback of the team, who is a very well-liked guy in that locker room, yeah. Garoppolo, isn't it natural if there are questions about him for sort of the tribe to close ranks? Yes. And for everyone to just knee-jerk automatically say, hey, leave our Jimmy alone. Definitely. You know, they, so they're going to do that. Right. Even though they're concerned. Yeah, I bet they are. <laughs> well, I bet they are. Well, the other thing, too, I think you got to remember here is within those conversations, which I'm sure they're very real, like you're right, and guys are going to close ranks. But within having confidence or not confidence in Jimmy Garoppolo, and I would think there's confidence there, you know, is the fact that you're, I think they have faith in Shanahan. That's the other thing that I think they do. I think they yeah. just think Kyle will figure out a way to get him going and Can, find some easy plays to get him going to where he feels confident and then we all feel confident in him as well. Here's the Shanahan effect on the San Francisco 49ers. This, I asked Joe Staley 
an hour after the NFC championship game, I said, Joe, let me ask you, did you really think really that you'd ever get to another Super Bowl? And he said, no. Yeah. I mean, now that is raw and honest. And then after about three seconds, he said, but the first time Kyle Shanahan talked to our team, I thought we, we might, we might have a chance. Right. And he said that was so impressive, not because he's Mr. Uh, after dinner speaker, but because he just looked us in the eye and basically said, all right, men, you know, I mean, here's the way it's going to be. And he totally took command of that team at that time. And I really think that is the key. They have faith in him. However it plays out, he's got a plan and it'll work. And if the plan doesn't work, he'll move on to a plan that does work. Yep. And, yeah. And, and that's, look, they, they've been in every game they've played this year. Yep. They, they, they've, they've only had a few narrow losses in tough spots. And, uh, you know, they're uh, across the board. You take away Patrick Mahomes and Jimmy Garoppolo, the 49ers are the better team. Yes, they are. I Patrick agree. Mahomes narrows it considerably. Yeah, he's a huge the gap. the 49ers at every other position are the better team. I, I, I think so. And, you know, that's why I lean 49ers so far sitting here on a Tuesday. I'm, I'm picking them because I'm going to go with the better team. But I am scared to death of the big guy in the red jersey that's standing up here, which is number 15, Patrick Mahomes, because he is, he's a magic man. Well, we're. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.